What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 107 and we start today's episode with like our fixtures for February, as you can see a really full month here, Athletic Bilbao in the Copa del Rey quarterfinal, our rivals Espanyol away, our other rivals Real Madrid, Real Sociedad high flying away from home, Atletico Madrid at the end of the month and lest we forget the first leg of our Champions League last 16 tie against Liverpool as well, what a busy month and a big month for February we've got coming up. And I, I don't know what you guys are saying to me, but I, I really like February just as a neutral um, watching the uh, the top uh, competitions, as you say, the top European leagues. Because again, as you see in this month of February, there's always like massive games happening in February. You know, second half of the season, the league games tend to mean more. And then you've got the domestic cup games and the Champions League comes back, the Europa League comes back after the winter. It's just a, it's just a great month for football, you know. But uh, anyway, first game of this episode was on the back of the 3-0 win against Valencia in our last game and of course the transfer deadline day signing as well taking on Bilbao away from home in the Basque region uh, in the Copa del Rey last day now obviously you guys often ask me for like career mode suggestions as I always say I think that the best team to use is your favorite team hands down but if you can for like unique challenges I really believe Bilbao would be a great side to do a career mode with now in the game as we know you can do whatever you want however Athletic Bilbao have a policy of only signing and using players from the Basque region in their team. So it would be kind of like a club and country, but instead of a club and country, it's a club and region. You know, if you were to do a Bilbao career mode and have that rule they have implemented in real life, only signing and using players from the Basque region, you'd have to heavily focus on youth academy work and youth development work, uh, getting players from Spain and uh, just, you know, imagine it all come from the local Basque region and of course only signing players uh, that are from, that are from the Basque area too. Definitely something I, I recommend. They've got a real stadium in the game, some really nice kits as well. They've had some good years in, in years gone by in European competitions as well and certainly a team I'd recommend for a FIFA CM. And as we win the game by three goals today, we make it through to the Copa del Rey uh, semi-finals for the second time in two years, see the other results, Real Madrid getting through, beating Ibar, Celta, uh, Vigo beating Getafe, and also our local rivals, Espanyol making it through to the final for the Copa del Rey as well. I was thinking, who have we got in the semi-finals? Will we be meeting Real Madrid just like last year, or will we have our local rivals, or possibly Celta Vigo? Well, in the end, it was indeed our local rivals, Espanyol, with the first leg of the two-legged tie coming away from home. Real Madrid versus Celta Vigo is the other tie, and Espanyol this season doing really well too. They're in the European place right now, sixth place the table, 17 games to go, and only three points behind Real Madrid. So we'll face Espanyol at the RCD Stadium back to back, first in the league, and then in the first leg of the Copa del Rey semi-finals as well. So as things stand, there could well be an El Clasico final on the cards. Last year, of course, we had Atletico Madrid. We ended up beating them very comfortably, but with Atletico Madrid out, Real Madrid still in there. We've got Espanyol in the semi-final first leg at this very ground for our second game of today's episode this one coming in the league of course and heading into this game right now still top of the table 17 games to go there is a good amount of point separation between us and the chasing pack but it's not done yet and as we talked about in the last episode and the episode before that and perhaps the every episode in the season so far you know what i'm going for this season it's that new points record last season as we know I had the chance to get the joint point record on the final day and you know I bottled it first to a minute but this season it, it's been a more competitive season even though it might not look that way in the league but I'm still gonna go for it regardless so away from home against our local rivals Fatty gave us the opening goal. We almost made it two through Leandro, though he would get goal number 15 early on into the second half. Leandro this season, man, he's been so creative, but also our second highest scorer as well, right behind Fatty with 18 this campaign. And late on in the game, well, we were in control really from start to finish, to be honest, to Espanyol grabs his consolation goal, but I knew that's what it would prove to be. They could have had a late fight back, but yeah, really, from the first whistle, whistle to the last, I was in control. And this is one of those games where I, I felt as though I was definitely full value for the win. But as I mentioned before, there have been a lot of games this season where we've only scraped a one goal win like that one was, but it's been a much, much, much more challenging game for me. That one wasn't quite as difficult as some of the other ones have been this season. So for our third game, the exact same fixture, but this time coming in the cup and not the league, RCD Stadium once again, Espanyol versus Barcelona in the Derby de Barcelona. Heading into the game, feeling very confident indeed. Just beat them on the weekend, so why not on Wednesday night? They also kept a lot of their starters out there, whereas I made a lot of changes 
opportunities for this one here to have a fresher side. And just nine minutes in, a chance to take the lead, which we'd do so as well. Moyes, Keane, banging it in. It's been so difficult this season, you know, Leandro coming in, you know, spending all the money we did on the former Crystal Palace man, making him the spearhead of our three-pronged attack. Poor Keane, he was the second highest scorer in the league last year, and yet this season he's had to play second fiddle to Leandro. But again, we're prioritising the youth, prioritising the young player, but Keane is still as good as ever. First time finish was glorious, and then this one for his second 21 minutes in. What a rocket, angled in to the bottom corner, shushing the camera and saying, I'm still as good as ever, even though I'm now on Barca's bench. So 2-0 Barcelona, and yeah, just like in the last game against Espanyol, I feel like once I've beaten a team before, I feel like I know the best ways to get myself more chances when I meet them once again. You know, even though the difficulty may remain the same, I might possibly adjust the sliders uh, by a minor amount. I still feel very confident indeed of knowing the right ways to play against them in order to get the win. So when I'm facing a team back to back, it just seems like I've just got to repeat the process from the last game, you know, to get the wins. Just after the restart, Ansu Fati gets another to add to what's been another splendid campaign from our number 17. That made it 3-0 and then 20 minutes ago go over three goal cushion again the job was done we were winning the first leg comfortably but I wanted more goals to know that in the second leg I could rest pretty much my entire team Bill Barteta slides through Moyes Keane and he bags his hat trick as well so yeah it's been it's been tough to have Keane on the bench this season there's no way to incorporate all four players at once you know I guess I could play a 4-2-4 but as I often say I don't like to change the formation and the tactical setup the team has when I go in to manage the team I like to adapt to what they've got so unfortunately one player had to miss out Keane Dembele Fatty or Leandro. In the end, it was Keane, but hey, this might be a bench bench warmer. Could you call him a bench warmer? Well, a bench player for now, but he's still just as good as ever. So yeah, 4 a win there. And again, when you, when you beat a team once and you've got them again, you kind of feel psychologically ready to face them, knowing you're going to be more likely to pick up the win once again, because yeah, you've already done it once. What's stopping you doing it once again? So 4 a win there. And you know, one of the reasons as well, uh, I really like playing in Spain in this year's FIBA CM, and also the year before as well. I think the year before too, wasn't it? Is that now, because of the licensing deal, They've got so many real stadiums in La Liga and just in Spain in general as well. The RCD stadium is really, really nice. And, you know, I was talking about career mode teams to use if you're looking for a, a challenge and a project. Honestly, Espanyol are a fantastic shout. Well. They've got some really nice kits. Again, glorious real stadium in the game. And also with them being from Barcelona, you've got the local rivalry with the big dogs Barcelona. You've got Real Madrid as well. The La Liga champions Atletico Madrid to battle with too. They're, they're definitely a team worth using. They're trying to trying to you know make Espanyol the biggest team in Barcelona and not Barcelona themselves. It's it's definitely worth considering. There are just so many great teams in Spain to use for a FIFA CM. The options really are limitless. But uh, so with the penultimate game of today's episode, uh, El Clasico, second uh, second game against them this season. Uh, after the win at the Bernabeu in the first, sorry, the draw at the Bernabeu in the first game. Taking him on here at the new Camp. Took the lead through Pedro Porro getting his third this season. He'll never be as good as he was last year, but even so, he made it 1-0. Uh, Martin Odegaard, back from Arsenal, leveled things for Real Madrid. Had a late chance through Porro again to win it, but unfortunately could only settle for a point in that game. And I thought the crowd reactions were a little bit too severe and strict as well. I mentioned a few times before, but obviously the, the more immersive the game feels, the better. But sometimes that kind of takes away from the immersion. You know, the, the crowd getting on my back after a 1-1 draw against Real Madrid when we're still seven points clear at the top with 15 games to go. Uh, I don't think they'd be acting like that in real life, you know. But uh, still, with the final game of today's episode, again, we're talking about teams to use for a FIFA CM. And I can't help but point out these guys as well. I'm throwing out recommendations left, right and centre today. Real Sociedad, uh, taking on away from home. One of the front runners in La Liga right now uh, in the chasing pack, trying to catch up to us in La Liga as we still lead the way. They've got some really nice kits in the game. They've got some really great talent as well. Zuba Mendy, um... Obviously, the, the, the highlight, who actually, of course, is our team now, uh, Mikel Ayazabal, one of the best wingers you can get in the game. Really fun team to use, but also a side needs a lot of transition if they're going to become one of the big dogs in La Liga. A real stadium in the game as well with the athletic track as well. Um, definitely worth considering for a few CM. But regardless, took him on. Uh, Leandro scored a very early goal, four minutes in, then Cucurella got our second as we went two goals up early in the first half. Kind of took my foot off the gas pedal a little bit in the second half. I'll be honest, it wasn't as 
ruthless as I was in the first 25, 30 minutes. So I'll see how we'll get a goal back later on, but thankfully managed to see out the game. 2-1 the final score as well. Still going for that quadruple. Still going for that points record. The undefeated season possibility is gone, but with 14 games to go, if we win 13 of 14, we'll set a new points record, and we're still chasing that quadruple as well. There's a long way to go in the season, but as things stand, one of those three objectives might have gone, but the other two still remain and are still achievable. But that was this episode of the Realist CM, guys. A big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you had, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and we'll see you for the next episode of the Realist CM very soon.